So our next speaker is uh, Shantanu Sinha from Polab Department of Physics, University of Oslo. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, thanks, Puruda and um, Shwadeep and Devayan for uh, organizing this conference and giving me opportunity to present here. Uh, it's, I think it's my f fourth uh, frag meet uh, here, and it's always very nice to be here and detail talks with uh, very uh, precise uh, groups. Uh, so today um, I'm going to present uh, uh, something very specific on uh, two-phase flow in porous medium, and that is the uh, nonlinear growth of viscous fingers. And um, before uh, this is something we have done very recently. And um, before going to the this uh, specific problem. I'll go through a quick overview of nonlinearity in the steady state flow, which we think has the same uh, origin uh, of the nonlinearity. So, uh, if I uh, start from very basics, and uh, that is the Darcy law. So, this is the column of sand, and uh, water is injected uh, from the top to bottom, and there is two uh, pressure sensors. And uh, in the steady state, it uh, behaves like this: the flow rate uh, goes to uh, linearly dependent on the pressure drop. And there are other terms like this is the uh, hydraulic conductivity, it depends on how uh, porosity and how big and small sands are. Uh, but the, if we do the simil very similar uh, experiment uh, for uh, for uh, two fluids, uh, this is the experiment setup, Marcel, I think uh, Alex also showed. Uh, this is the two uh, alternate uh, fluids are injected in the porous medium. It's a helicho cell filled with uh, glass beads. And it uh, looks like this, uh, and uh, that's when the system is uh, going go, goes to the steady state. Uh, we find uh, this kind of relationship. Uh, this is a capillary uh, capillary number as a function of uh, uh, Marcel pressure the pressure drop. And if we translate this capillary number to the flow rate, uh, it uh, gives this relationship. This Q, this a flow rate, goes uh, delta P to the power 1.85. That means the pressure the flow rate increases much faster uh, than the pressure drop. Now the steady state flow. Um, what we are to, I'm going to talk later on is the uh, fingers. But before that, let me uh, explain. Let me give some uh, brief uh, introduction of a few terms I will use. Uh, first of all, uh, two-phase flow is the uh, flow of two two immersible fluids uh, through the same space. But there's a different, very different kinds of flow regimes there, depending on Reynolds number and all this stuff. Uh, but uh, what I am going to talk about this this my uh, problems is this kind of regime. It's a laminar flow. Uh, there are interface between the two fluids and there are interface between uh, this this uh, two fluids and this is in a single tube but uh, it can be a, this kind of uh, uh, variable the di capillary tube and when then there are many many of this connected to a system and uh, we have a porous medium. this is a two dimensional helicho cell the same what we have I have since last uh, slide and this is the uh, three dimensional porous rock which consists of many many of different uh, pores of different sizes and shapes and there are two fluids here, uh, one based on this contact angle uh, of this fluid, if it's uh, n less than 90 degree inside that fluid, uh, I call this a weighting fluid or more weighting fluid. And uh, uh, if this contact angle is uh, greater than 90 degree, then I call this a non-weighting fluid. So if th this is air, mercury and glass, then this is the non-weighting fluid, this is the weighting fluid, and this is the opposite for the other case. And there is a uh, few uh, dimensionless number, one is the uh, capillary number which is the ratio between the viscous forces to the capillary forces. Viscous forces because in the viscosity, the when you push the fluid, the viscosity opposes, opposes the uh, flow. And the capillary, capillary uh, forces which comes from this uh, uh, surface tension at the interfaces. And then another the dimensional, um, dimensionless number is the viscosity ratio, or ra ratio between the viscosities of the weighting and non-weighting fluid. And, and this is the saturation of the weighting fluid, which is basically the volume fraction. And the sum of these two is uh, one, obviously. Uh, now there are two different scenarios uh, of operation. One is this steady state flow, which I have already showed in the uh, previous slide. And another operation is the uh, uh, injection of single fluid in the same helicho cell, uh, but it was filled with uh, uh, the water, this other mixture at the beginning, and air is injected, and this this uh, creates this kind of fingers. So. The nonlinearity in this situation has been studied uh, last 10, 20, 10, 12 years extensively. And the nonlinearity in this one, uh, which we have done recently, uh, which uh, I'll present at the end. So let's give a quick overview of this. So uh, the experiment I showed in the previous slide came in 2009. 
and that was one of the first experiments uh, of this uh, nonlinear uh, rheology. And after that, we went and did uh, several studies to find out what is the origin and how uh, it works for different system. So we started with a single tube first, a very simple system. And we considered this kind of variable radius because if you think about two beads and the pore space in, inside that has a, a narrow uh, pore throat. And um, for instantaneous flow rate, if nothing is moving, uh, you can uh, express this uh, uh, flow rate as a, as a function of pressure drop with this equation. This is a delta P. Uh, and this is the extra term comes from the capillary pressure between at the interfaces, the sum of all the capillary pressures. This is a generalization of Darcy law. But now, uh, the, as the interfaces are moving, this term keeps on changing because the tube tubes has, uh, has a shape. And uh, this is a simulation. If you think, look at the simulation that this is flowing uh, continuously. More and more interfaces is coming into the system. And at some point, things get stopped because uh, this, this is comparable to this one and it cannot overcome. This is stop. The video is still playing, but uh, the the uh, uh, fluids are not moving. And if you increase uh, the capillary pressure, and uh, if you increase the delta P, uh, then uh, things starts moving. But if the pressure drop is sum, uh, is low, then we can we can see that there is things are moving, slowing down, moving, slowing down. Is the effect of uh, this uh, capillary pressures, and when the high pressure drop is high, uh, things uh, uh, moves continuously. And, but this is a very simple system, so if we know the uh, variation of uh, this uh, functional form of this shape, uh, we can work this out analytically, and this gives uh, the average uh, time integrated version of uh, this uh, flow rate as a function of pressure drop. And this is the, how it looks like. So there's a threshold pressure below, below which things get stopped, and uh, above which we have this uh, square root kind of uh, relationship. And this is uh, proportional to surface tension. I have not written the expression. But and it looks like this. So in the beginning, it has this square root singularity, and then uh, it goes to the uh, linear. So at low pressure drop, it has this shape, and then high pressure drop, it, the capillary forces becomes insignificant, and it is linear. And this is very similar to uh, this kind of fluid, Bingham fluid, like uh, mayonnaise or uh, glycerin, where you have to push a threshold pressure. Uh, below which there is no flow, and after that there is a uh, linear uh, flow rate. Then we went one step further. We took a, a bundle of capillary capillary tubes, such that a uh, similar kind, but then we have distribution of the threshold there, uh, and uh, by using the uh, um, statistical equation for the single tube and the distribution of the um, thresholds, we can integrate this equation for multiple tubes, and we tried a few different types of distributions. This is one example, uh, a power law type distribution, and we get this behavior. So if you, there is a lower cutoff, uh, with, there, is no, there is no lower cutoff, we could do it uh, analytically, and this gives beta, this power law exponent, as, a fa as alpha plus one. Alpha is this exponent uh, related to this distribution. And with a lower cutoff, we could not do it analytically, which is a numerical uh, result. And this gives, and you can see that, uh, and this is directly, this uh, distribution directly controls the uh, power law. And if you put uh, alpha equals to uh, 1, it, this gives uh, the uniform distribution and you get beta equals to 2. So then we go, went one step further and we did it for the uh, uh, poor network. I'll present the model later on, but uh, this is a network of uh, network from uh, Beria Sandstone. Uh, and this is a real network, this is the reconstructed from the CT scan images of the real rock. And we take the network and do the simulation of uh, uh, through two fluids. And there we get this behavior. So at uh, low pressure drops, low capillary numbers, we get this nonlinear behavior with uh, in the 0.5 like quadratic behavior. And at the high pressure drops, the, the behavior becomes linear. And we also did some mean calculation. There also yeah, we uh, got uh, this uh, this behavior. As the threshold pressure below which there is no, no flow rate, and uh, above that, the things uh, uh, go to linear. Uh, and above that, this quadratic, and then very high pressure drop, things go linear. And also we uh, this is for uniform distribution, and we tried different distributions of the uh, capillary and different distribution of the pore net, pore, uh, pore properties. For example, pores uh, pores uh, pore radii and oatabilities. And there also you find that both pore distribution in the pore sizes um, controls the power law exponent of this beta. 
Now, um, this, all these results also supported by different groups. For example, these are the results, results from different groups. Uh, experimental, this is the lattice Boltzmann simulation. These are two experimental results. So, they have this uh, linear, non-linear regime and this uh, linear regime above. Now, different groups have the, um, reported different regimes. Uh, we mostly looked in this non-linear regime at intermediate capillary numbers and this linear regime at high capillary numbers. But there is also a non-linear regime uh, at the low capillary numbers, which have we have only uh, studied very limitedly. But uh, this we are focusing in this non-linear regime here. Now, a quick uh, understanding about how this nonlinearity happened. This is a very simple understanding. Of if if this we have a network of threshold registers. Uh, so if delta p uh, and this delta p or voltage you think about uh, is very low, then there is no connecting path. Uh, there is a threshold below which there is no flow. And if we increase delta p more and more uh, paths are connecting and the pressure, uh, the flow rate increases. So when there is uh, only one channel is here, then because this is linear, we get linear behavior. And then when uh, the uh, more and more paths are appearing in the system, then this the number of paths, this conductivity is depends on number of paths. So it, it so if we integrate twice the delta p, this gives us uh, uh, this uh, quadrating behavior. And then there is uh, all the paths are conducting, no uh, pa new paths are appearing. Then we get back this linear behavior. So this gives these three regimes of the uh, flow. But this is a very simple system. Nothing is moving here. Um, but uh, if we think about this uh, pores, how things are moving with time, and also they are not exactly this behavior. It's a much more complicated, but there's a good understanding of what is happening. Now, uh, again, so th this is this is all about so far. I presented about this picture, this steady, steady state flow. Now, um, the thing is that what happens here in the um, viscous, this is the fingerings. Now, the fingering patterns appears in like this is an experiment. So these are this these are th experiment of with three different flow rates. So when the flow rates are low. Uh, this uh, uh, non-weighting fluid is uh, in uh, non-weighting fluid is pushed into the system uh, filled with weighting fluids called drainage. And when the uh, uh, capillary number is low, that means that the viscous pressure drop is low. Uh, things are influenced by the disorder in the capillary uh, thre capillary uh, thresholds of individual uh, pores, and, and that's why you get this uh, this uh, thick uh, patterns. And this type of behaviors is explained by this uh, invasion percolation problem. You get similar kind of fractal dimension and other other uh, things, but when uh, we increase the viscous pressure drop, we push it uh, very fast. And the thing, this, and, and, uh, what happens is it, it it called viscous instabilities. So if there is a new path appears, it decreases the permeability or decreases the conductivity of the uh, increases the conductivity of system because it's a low viscous fluid, and it's a high viscous fluid, and it favors the that that uh, that channels and that path again. So this is viscous instability cause this viscous fingering and this this uh, this type of shapes are, are uh, structures generally uh, explained um, by DLA uh, diffusion limited aggregate which is a model you start the single uh, site and then uh, new sites appear in the system and stick to them and this is how you grow um, and uh, this also compared with the uh, continuum fingers so this is in the porous media if you do the same experiment in, in a helicho cell. Uh, without any porous structure, there is also viscous fingers, and uh, there are some similarities of these fingers or that also. So, and I'll, I'll I'll present that. Now we are not I am not going to talk about this. This is because uh, it's a uh, growth as a also pressure drop. So we are talking about this regime and some intermediate regime between these two. So there are two uh, two uh, different types of properties we talk about here. One is the shape properties. How what is the statistical shape of this finger? And another is the growth properties, how things are growing as a function of the local pressure drop. And now, when talking about shape of properties, this is generally uh, compared with the saffron taylor uh, uh, fingers of the, in the continuum system. So this is the same kind of viscous finger, but there is no porous structure inside. Same, and then he gave uh, this relationship between the uh, uh, shape, uh, between the distance from the tip, this Z versus X. And this this is this uh, structure. Uh, this shape is generally characterized by this parameter lambda, which is the ratio between this uh, or uh, pore space and the uh, width of the finger. Uh, so both DLA and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this finger generally compared with this. And another is the growth properties, where uh, the growth of the finger, local growth of the fingers, 
are uh, uh, exp um, expressed by the uh, this uh, linear Laplacian growth. So uh, delta p uh, is the same Darcy for each pore. So delta p, the uh, velocity of the interfaces follows the same Darcy law. And if we uh, consider incompressible full fluid, then the uh, gr uh, divergence of d is zero, and we get this uh, linear Laplacian growth. And this is uh, also obeyed, uh, assumed to be obeyed by the this uh, viscous fingers and also uh, this Sutherland Taylor fingers and DLA. But then the question here is this: What happens to this uh, this uh, nonlinearity? What we saw in the uh, steady state flow because the same type of disorder is there. Why it is linear here? Uh, so there was uh, an ex uh, experiment um, um, around 20 years back. But what they measured, they had the same viscous fingers and they have two sensors and they assumed uh, with some theoretical argument, they assumed this functional form between the uh, growth and the pressure drop as a quadratic dependence. And then using that uh, boundary conditions and these pictures of the uh, snapshots of the real experiment, they solved the Laplacian equations uh, in for this uh, these two points, what should be the uh, pressure drop at two, spoil and two points and two sensors. And they compared that with the experimental uh, result because they cannot put sensors at every, each, every point. So this was the results for their experiments. So dash, dashed line is the solution, and the uh, and points are from the um, from the sensor. So and it, it shows that it matches nicely, but it's not a conclusive picture. Okay. So uh, the second author of this work, they contacted us, and uh, we have discussions so whether we can do it, measure it, and directly from the uh, simulations. So now before presenting the uh, result, I go through the quickly one slide for the uh, model. So it's a, we call dynamic pore network modeling, where the uh, pore space is discretized with uh, networks of pores with simplified geometry, and each pore has uh, this uh, Washburn equation, just generalization of Darcy equation. So Q as a fun, uh, Q uh, varies with delta P minus PC, or PC is the uh, capillary pressure uh, from, uh, due to all the interfaces. And uh, this is the summation of all the pressures, and it 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 uh, behaves like this: is two gamma is a young Laplace, uh, and uh, plus the shape of the uh, tube, and then uh, it's an incompressible fluid, so the uh, sum of the all the fluids are zero, and then you get a set of linear equations, you solve it, and to time step with with time and, and on the interfaces, and there is also snap up and coalescence and things things and there, and then we can uh, do this uh, for the steady state simulation, which I already showed the result before. Uh, in two different OS by open boundary condition, the same as the experiment is done, or in the two in the um, periodic boundary condition. Here you can see that here is the viscous fingers, and here is the stable displacement uh, type of. Uh, and then we can do it for the um, uh, the drainage simulations also, and the capillary fingerings uh, in this regime. And uh, you can see this uh, ca this, uh, the growth is governed by the local capillary disorder in the capillary forces. And then there's a viscous fingering, and also this is it also the model can also uh, generate the stable displacement when you push, uh, inject a high viscous fluid into a low level low viscous fluid. And these are the results. Um, so how, how to measure? We measure the uh, growth uh, and shape as a function of the distance from the tip. Because if you see all the growth and everything is depends uh, how for, how it is the position from the tip also. So we uh, generate a dynamic coordinate system, which is uh, fixed on the tip, and everything is measured from that. And if you think about uh, the averaging about time and time and different samples, then this uh, statistical profile is basically a statistically invariant uh, with time if we measure with this coordinate system. And these are the many simulations we've done as a function of capillary number and viscosity ratios. And you see things goes from the capillary fingering towards uh, viscous fingering regime. And this is a comparison of the shape of the submantellar. So uh, this is uh, for our simulation. And it, you can see that they're different from the DLA and also from the uh, submantellar. And there is a continuous variation of the lambda as a function of the capillary number. It's not a constant uh, uh, constant number. And then uh, the last uh, part, the growth versus uh, pressure drop. So if you think about the growth, phi is a growth. and uh, there's a distribution of the capillary capillary uh, thresholds in the pores. So the growth of the uh, okay, the growth of the uh, fingers will uh, depend on how many fingers are invaded, and uh, the pressure drop across. Uh, this is from the Washburn equation. 
and if we can consider a single a simple simple uh, um, functional form of for this uh, uniform distribution we can work with analytically and you can we can end up with two different regime we for one regime we can have uh, the quadratic dependence and another regime we have linear dependence but we don't uh, we, in our real system we don't have this in uniform distribution is a complicated relationship between the uh, all four properties so uh, we go to a simulation and we find the uh, growth which is the rate of increase of volume uh, divided by time and then if we, if we if we integrate over the x-axis we get as a function of the z because it is symmetrical on the x-axis and this looks like this so growth mostly happens close to the fingers and then it dies out and then local pressure drop we can find out from the pressures in individual nodes and this is the non-weighting pressure you can see there's no not much variation because it's a low viscous fluid and this is the weighting pressure and this is the difference between these two you can see that weighting pressures the pressure drop is high in the close to the fingertip and then it's almost horizontal and that's why it is almost uh, no growth here so this is the threshold pressure because even if the pressure is non-zero here you don't see any growth so from this uh, from this horizontal uh, value we can find out the threshold pressure so you measure the threshold pressures in the last slide and um, from for many many simulations and this looks like this for two different viscosity ratios and you can see that they don't depend on the uh, viscosity ratio because this is a function of the surface tension on the viscosities and then we compared uh, so now we have the pressure drop we have threshold pressure and we can measure the, we have the growth we can measure the beta and then looks like this so these are the power loss and it, clearly you can see the similar as the uh, steady state uh, flows here also you can see the same uh, non-linear regime and the linear regime across the water the linear regime uh, which generally people already know from a long long year but this is new and this uh, looks like how the experience looks like so there's no linear regime close to between 2.5 to 3 and then it crosses over to uniform uh, crosses over to the linear uh, directions and these were just published uh, two days back, uh, fifth of March, first day of the conference. So it's uh, properly fits. You know. Okay, so uh, that's all. Uh, this is a quick uh, summary. So we studied the viscous fingers, uh, and then uh, which shows in the nonlinear growth and interpreted the capillary numbers, and then crosses over to the Laplacian growth at the high capillary numbers, and also the uh, shapes can be different from the Shabmontella fingers or from DLA. And some open questions. Uh, the first question appears that if we uh, know the beta from the steady state, whether it, is, it will be the same for these two for the same system because the origin seems to be the same. Same the uh, distribution in the disorder of the in the in the capillary thresholds, and also how to relate this exponent for different functional form of the dis of this uh, disorder. Yeah. So that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Shantanu. Uh, any questions? I had one question. In the beginning, you showed there were two regimes with uh, capillary pressure this. and the pressure gradient. Right, these two. Yeah. So is there any, um, I mean, the transition seems to be very abrupt. I mean, there is no, are the mechanisms very... What what is the difference? Why why do we see this two regimes? Yeah, I mean, what uh, in the simple for simple form, what we believe that uh, here uh, the new paths because there's a threshold pressure is there. Yeah. So when and the threshold pressures is not all the global pressure drop is such that not all, not all the pores have uh, crossed these threshold pressures. Uh, new and new new paths are appearing in the system. So when you increase the pressure drop the flow rate in the individual conducting paths is higher, is increases, and also the number of paths are also increases. So you, the flow rate increases much faster than the pressure drop. And what here we think that uh, the, the new, the, almost all the possible paths are already there. So it's only increasing the uh, flow rates in the existing uh, possible paths. So, But the transition seems to be very abrupt. Yes. Uh, I mean, but it's a log scale, there may be some... Uh, if are there any other questions? If not, then I think we will.